Welcome back to Brownlow Books. I um, read one of my arcs <laughs> that I normally don't get to before their release. I am a little behind on this one. I mean, I had three coming out on the same day and I only got them like a week before, they were, two weeks maybe, before they were being published. I had to pick and choose. This one went low on the list and I wasn't wrong. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, I read The Boys by Katie Hafner, um, de debut novel, I believe. Uh, I'm actually going to read the back to you because I don't know how to describe this without spoiling things and they do it fine, so it's fine. When introverted Ethan Fawcett marries the vivacious Barb, he has every reason to believe that he will be delivered from a lifetime of solitude. One day, Barb brings home two young brothers, Tommy and Sam, for them to foster, and when the pandemic hits, Ethan becomes obsessed with providing a perfect life for them. Instead of bringing Barb and Ethan closer together, though, the boys become a wedge in their relationship, as Ethan is unable to share with Barb a secret that has been haunting him since childhood. Ethan takes the boys on a biking trip to Italy, and it becomes clear just how unusual Ethan and his children are and what it will take for Ethan to repair his marriage. So I tell you that because I want to tell you more things. So I will start with, it is broken up into three parts. Part one, Ethan and Barb, the boys, whatever. Um, the largest, largest part, part one. Uh, we get a part two, which is in Italy smaller, medium-sized, couple of chapters. Um, and then, like, when I say the first one's large, I mean it's more than half the book. Okay, part three <laughs> is teeny tiny. So large, medium, teeny tiny. All right, I just want to put that out there because it's what I'm going to talk about. Um, Ethan's had a really shit life. <laughs> very, very shit. Dead parents in a tragic accident. Um, his grandparents die just after he and Barb get married, one of them of a broken heart. Um, him and Barb go on a vacation and they come back and their elderly cat basically needs to be put down right when they fucking come back. It's just a lot of shit things have happened to Ethan in his life. And so like, you know, Barb's a little ray of light, but um, the cherry on top of all that horrible shit is the pandemic, as they said. Um, the, like, the part one is really fucking rough. I almost gave up on it twice. Okay? I'm not much of a giver-upper. If I hate something, I will read it to fucking thoroughly rip it apart. All right? So, the fact that I was ready to give up means you it's either so fucking boring that I just literally can't or so fucking awful that I just literally can't. Like, I gave up on fucking Gormick McCarthy because I was like, I just literally fucking can't, <laughs> all right? So when I tell you that part one of this is so fucking sad and depressing, that's what the fuck is going on there. Um, it's just like, for me, all the horrible, horrible things that happen in part one and you're ready to give up and you're just like, this fucking sucks. Like, two and three is uplifting, but I'm not sure that they're worth the pain you go through in part one, which as I said, is more than half of the book. For me, just sort of not worth it. And like, he and Barb are getting, are separated, right? We get that from fucking page one. So seeing their fucking love story is just like an extra little stab. You're just like, why? Why? It's very, it's very depressing. Like horribly, extremely depressing. And it's just the lightness of, of part two and three just for me, don't make up for it. Like, I, if someone was like, oh, you read that, is it good? I'd be like, yeah, but, <laughs> you know? Um, I mean, I didn't hate it. I definitely didn't love it. It's just kind of that mediocre middle for me, despite feeling so many fucking things. I felt so many fucking things. I fucking saw it at one point. Cat, no surprise. At least he only killed it once. Look at you, Matt Hag. 
Um, <laughs> that was kind of fucking sucky because pretty much died at almost the same age and way that my cat did. So that was just fucking, that was, huh, that was literally one week before the pandemic started. It was a great couple of months. Um, <laughs> just a big fuck you to the world. <laughs> yeah, I just, it's a lot. Part one is a lot. I cannot stress how a lot and how depressing part one is. Like, I think, I get, I, I guess it proves to show that Katie's a good writer. <laughs> because I was just like, <sighs> it's fucking, it's fucking over here. <laughs> because like, she did make me feel things. They were just really horrible things that I didn't think I was going to get out of what this book was described as, you know? I thought most of it was going to be two boys and their adoptive dad in Italy. And that's not, not even near true. <laughs> it's, it's like not even a third. So, you know, that, that part was kind of a bait and switch for me kind of thing, right? So yeah, I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. I do feel like it could potentially be good for book clubs because it does have this weird twist that I'm not going to say a single solitary fucking thing about because it is what provides the levity and bit of fun in part two and three. Um, that, that's all I say about that. If you really must know, find my Instagram and fucking message me and I'll fucking tell you. <laughs> But, um, yeah, it was, it was a sharp turn right before Italy. I'll give that. Um, I really enjoyed the part in Italy. Um, this one guide that was supposed to be with Ethan and the boys. <laughs> she lost her grandmother in the early days of the pandemic. And her and her grandmother used to live together and they used to write little letters to each other and put them into a couch cushion, which was like their mailbox. And I was thought it was so fucking adorable. And then there's a thing that plays off of that, just like a little moment. It's it's just a little moment. And I fucking loved it. <laughs> but um Izzy is not enough for the rest of this dumpster fire of a novel <laughs> sadness. Um Yeah. It's just, it is what it is. It's kind of mediocre for me. Um, the highs and lows even out to just kind of, okay. For me, there are definitely people who would look at this book and be like, that is right up my alley. Like, that's what I want. And they'll do fine and it'll be fine for them. But for me, not, not so much. Uh, so like I said, this was an ARC, and it was published July 12th. Have I been rating things that are ARCs? Uh, solid three. <laughs> As I said, didn't love, didn't hate. Just kind of... <sighs> yeah, I feel like that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Alright, thanks for hanging around, and I'll see you next time.